Welcome to Radio Storytime on CPL Radio. Today's theme is classic stories. Hi, I'm Mrs. K, and I'm here with Miss Heidi. Old time radio was filled with programs that became instant classics. Shows like The Lone Ranger, Little Orphan Annie, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, and The Shadow were huge hits. These radio programs and others had huge followings. Families would make time to listen to their favorites each week. Movie theaters would even take breaks during shows so patrons would not miss their favorite radio program. Classic radio programs are still a large part, have a large uh, following today. Archives of all classic shows can be found on CDs, podcasts, and on digital form. Just like radio, there are many classic children's stories. Today, we are sharing a couple of our favorite classic tales. So sit back and enjoy today's selections. Our first story is The Little Engine That Could by Waddy Piper, published by Platt and Punk Publishers. Chug, 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 puff, 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 ding, dong, ding, dong. The little train rumbled over the tracks. She was a happy little train, for she had such a jolly load to carry. Her cars were filled with good things for boys and girls. There were toy animals, giraffes with long necks, teddy bears with almost no necks at all, and even a baby elephant. Then there were dolls, dolls with blue eyes and yellow curls, dolls with brown eyes and brown bobbed heads, and the funniest little toy clown you ever saw. And there were cars full of toy engines, airplanes, tops, jackknives, picture puzzles, books, and every kind of thing boys and girls could want. But that was not all. Some of the cars were filled with, so- with all sorts of good things for boys and girls to eat. Big golden oranges, red-cheeked apples, bottles of creamy milk for their breakfasts, fresh spinach for their dinners, peppermint drops, and lollipops for their after-dinner treats. The little train was carrying all these wonderful things to the good boys and girls on the other side of the mountain. She puffed along merrily. Then all of a sudden, she stopped with a jerk. She simply couldn't go on another inch. She tried and she tried, but her wheels would not turn. What are all those good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain going to do without their wonderful toys to play with and their good food to eat? Here comes a shiny new engine said the funny little clown who jumped out of the train. Let's ask him for help. So all the dolls and toys cried out together. Please, shiny engine, won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the shiny engine snorted. I pull you? I'm a passenger engine. I've just carried a fine big train over the mountain with more cars than you ever dreamed of. My train had sleeping cars with comfortable berths, a dining car where waiters bring whatever hungry people want to eat, and a parlor car where people can sit in soft armchairs and look out the big plate glass windows. I pull the likes of you? Indeed not. And off he steamed to the roundhouse where engines live when they are not busy. How sad the little train and the dolls and boys and the dolls and toys felt. Then the little clown called out, The passenger train is not the only thing in the world. Here comes another engine, a great big strong one. Let's ask him to help us. The little clown, toy clown, waved his flag and the big strong engine came to a stop. Oh, please, please, big engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the good little boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the big strong engine bellowed, I am a freight train. I have just pulled a big train with big machines over the mountain. These machines print books and newspapers for grown-ups to read. I am a very important engine indeed. I won't pull the likes of you. And the freight train puffed off indignantly to the roundhouse. The little train and all the dolls and toys were very sad. Cheer up, cried the little toy clown. The freight engine is not the only one in the world. Here comes another. He looks very old and tired, but our train is so little, perhaps he can help us. So the little toy clown waved his flag, and the dingy, rusty old engine stopped. Please, kind engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. 
won't you please help pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the rusty old engine sighed. I am so tired. I must rest my weary wheels. I cannot pull even a little train as yours over the mountain. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. And off he rumbled to the rumbled to the roundhouse chugging. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Then indeed the little train was very, very sad, and the dolls and toys were ready to cry. But the little town clown called out. Here is another engine coming, a little blue engine, a very little one. Perhaps she can help us. The very little engine came chug, chug, chugging merrily along. When she saw the toy clown's flag, she stopped quickly. What's the matter, my friends? She asked kindly. Oh, little blue engine, cried the dolls and toys. Will you pull us over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the good boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. Please, please help us, little blue engine. Well, I'm not very big, said the little blue engine. They use me only for switching trains in the yard. I've never been over the mountain. But we must get over the mountain before the children awake, said all the dolls and toys. The very little engine looked up and saw the tears in the doll's eyes. And she thought of the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain who would not have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless she helped. Then she said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she hitched herself to the little train. She tugged and she pulled and she pulled and she tugged and slowly, 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 they started off. The toy clown jumped aboard and all the dolls and toy animals began to smile and cheer. Puff, puff, chug, chug, went the little blue engine. I think I can, 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 I think I can. Up, 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 faster and faster, faster and faster, the little engine climbed until at last they reached the top of the mountain. Down in the valley lay the city. Hooray, hooray, cried the funny little clown and all the dolls and toys. The good little boys and girls in the city will be so happy because you helped us. Kind little blue engine. And the little blue engine smiled and seemed to say, as she puffed steadily down the mountain, I thought I could, 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 I thought I could. Now a word from our sponsor. This is Miss Heidi from the Youth Services Department of CPL to tell you what's happening in the library. Calling all dinosaur fans! Stop in the library next Thursday, May 20th to get your storytime grab-and-go that's all about dinos. Enjoy a craft and other dinosaur-themed activities. Check out our selection of dinosaur picture books and nonfiction books. Get yours before they are extinct! Now, here's Mrs. K to tell our Cedarburg Library cardholders about a fun streaming service the library offers. Thanks, Miss Heidi. Are you looking for some fun educational programs for your kids? Maybe a short story or two? Go to Canopy.com and sign up free using your Cedarburg Library card. Click on the Canopy Kids section for a variety of educational programming for your little ones. There are movies for grown-ups, too. Stay tuned this summer for Quick Flicks program with stories found on Canopy. Now back to our program. Our second story is Miss Nelson is Missing by Harry Allard, published by Houghton Mifflin Company, read by Miss Heidi. The kids in room 207 were misbehaving again. Spitballs stuck to the ceiling. Paper planes whizzed through the air. They were the worst behaved class in the whole school. Now settle down, said Miss Nelson in a sweet voice. But the class would not settle down. They whispered and giggled. They squirmed and made faces. They were even rude during story hour. And they always refused to do their lessons. Something will have to be done, said Miss Nelson. The next morning, Miss Nelson did not come to school. Wow, yelled the kids. Now we can really act up. They began to make more spitballs and paper planes. 
Today, let's just be terrible, they said. Not so fast, hissed an unpleasant voice. A woman in an ugly black dress stood before them. I am your new teacher, Miss Viola Swamp, and she rapped the desk with her ruler. Where is Miss Nelson? asked the kids. Never mind that, snapped Miss Swamp. Open those arithmetic books. Miss Nelson's kids did as they were told. They could see that Miss Swamp was a real witch. She meant business. Right away, she put them to work, and she loaded them down with homework. We'll have no story hour today, said Miss Swamp. Keep your mouth shut, said Miss Swamp. Sit perfectly still, said Miss Swamp. And if you misbehave, you'll be sorry, said Miss Swamp. The kids in room 207 had never worked so hard. Days went by, and there was no sign of Miss Nelson. The kids missed Miss Nelson. Maybe we should try to find her, they said. Some of them went to the police. Detective McSmog was assigned to the case. He listened to their story. He scratched his chin. Hmm, he said. Hmm. I think Miss Nelson is missing. Detective McSmog would not be much help. Other kids went to Miss Nelson's house. The shades were tightly drawn and no one answered the door. In fact, the only person they did see was the wicked Miss Viola Swamp coming up the street. If she sees us, she'll give us more homework. They got away just in time. Maybe something terrible happened to Miss Nelson. Maybe she was gobbled up by a shark, said one of the kids. But that didn't seem likely. Maybe Miss Nelson went to Mars, said another kid. But that didn't seem likely either. I know, exclaimed one know-it-all. Maybe Miss Nelson's car was carried off by a swarm of angry butterflies. But that was the least likely of all. The kids in room 207 became very discouraged. It seemed that Miss Nelson was never coming back, and they would be stuck with Miss Viola Swamp forever. They heard footsteps in the hall. Here comes the witch, they whispered. Hello, children, someone said in a sweet voice. It was Miss Nelson. Did you miss me, she asked. We certainly did, cried all the kids. Where were you? That's my little secret, said Miss Nelson. <laughs> Excuse me. My nose is running. Okay. That's my little secret, said Miss Nelson. How about a story hour? Oh, yes, cried the kids. Miss Nelson noticed that during story hour, no one was rude or silly. What brought about this lovely change, she asked. That's our little secret, said the kids. Back home, Miss Nelson took off her coat and hung it in the closet right next to an ugly black dress. When it was time for bed, she sang a little song. I'll never tell, she said to herself with a smile. P.S. Detective McSmog is working on a new case. He is now looking for Miss Viola Swamp. <laughs> Tune in next time when our theme will be dinosaurs. I'm Mrs. K. And I'm Miss Heidi. See, See you, you next time. time.